All right, so in this video, I want to talk about two things, the strategy of zero DTE and using a bracket order with Quest Trade. So today with volatility being up in the morning, I decided to play a zero DTE, so a zero days to expiration trade on the triple Qs. And as you can see, the Qs dropped, had a low today of 382. So when the Qs, when the triple Qs were trading at around 382, I noticed a 373 strike, the 373 put expiring today so zero days to expiration was trading for about 50 cents as you can see obviously expired worthless because the queues right now is trading at 384 or closed at 384 so if we look at the quote here let's look at the chart of the option itself so you can see the morning here so i sold it pretty early i think a little bit before 10 o'clock i sold it for 50 cents i did eight contracts uh, and then, but I had a plan and I'll show you my exit strategy when I show you the bracket order. But so I, I sold the option for 50 cents. As you can see, it, continued, it went a little bit higher, 57, and then it dropped actually to 21 cents. I didn't close it. And then it continued going higher. And I think at some point it, it had a high of, of the day of 69 cents about. And then as you can see, it then continued and then it just dropped towards the end of the day because the queues actually went higher and obviously stayed above 373. So as long as the triple queues stay above 373, the put option would expire worthless. Now, let me show you how to set up a bracket order with Quest Trade. So basically go to option, look up the option that you wanna trade. Uh, and then let's do the example here. I'll just click anywhere here, click buy and sell. And then it opens up the order entry window. So what I did is I sold the 373 put here when the Q, triple Qs were trading at 382 in the morning. So December 17 expiry, I had done eight contracts. And so basically I asked for 50 cents. I wanted to sell it for 50 cents, eight contracts, eight times five, that's $400. But with any zero DTE strategy, you need to have an exit plan. So you need to have an order to take profit and you need to have an order to stop loss because obviously the loss can the max loss or the loss can be big so you can't just let the trade play out you have to cap your loss you have to have a stop loss so how do you set this up so how do you set this up in quest trade automatically so that you're not watching the computer screen the whole day so in the order entry window you see view more options over here just click on view more options and then you see bracket order and special instruction. So we're gonna choose bracket order. So you just click on off over here to turn it on. And now we've turned it on. So as you can see, I've entered an order, a limit price to sell for 50 cents. And then there are two sections in the bracket order. There's a section for profit and there's a section for loss. So stop loss basically. And under stop, you have something called trailing stop, but I'm not gonna use that. So what I did today is I used a regular stop loss and I used a take profit order. So basically what this means, I'll show you the order that I entered. I entered 10 cents over here and I entered a stop loss of $1.50. So basically what I did is I want to sell the option for 50 cents. Once this order fails, I've got two conditional orders. So if the trade is trading for 10 cents, if the option is trading for 10 cents, close the trade, take profit. But if the, if the option goes to $1.50, so what I sold for 50 cents, if it goes to $1.50, which is, so basically I set a stop loss at 3x. So if it goes to $1.50, close the trade automatically. So I would. I would uh, realize a loss, but at least I'd avoid the trade getting out of control. So once I've entered the values, I just click sell. I get a, a message here from Questrade explaining the bracket order. So when placing a bracket order, please note the following. The primary order must fill completely. The profit and loss exits are activated. So the, so the first order has to fill before the profit and loss uh, orders are, uh, exits are activated. Once the profit exit partially or completely fills, or the loss exit triggers, the remaining exit order will be canceled automatically. That means a bracket order may lose stop loss protection if the profit exit only partially fills. So that's that's dangerous. And I'll explain in the next window. If any orders within your bracket are rejected during order entry or by the exchange, including accepted stop orders after triggering, 
the entire bracket order may be cancelled and you may be required to re-enter your order. So basically you can't totally rely, you can't completely rely on, on, the, on the orders executing for you automatically. You still have to be watching your account, but maybe not all day, but you still have to check in on your account. So once I do that, I click OK. And here's what it looks like. So right now, I don't have the buying power, so I'm just gonna use the example for, with one contract. So I'm gonna go back. So I'm gonna go back here and just choose one contract. And as you can see, it's 50 cents. So I wanna sell for 50 cents. I wanna buy it back for 10 cents if it's profitable. But if it goes over $1.50, buy it back as well, close the trade. All right, so here's what a, how, so here's what a bracket order looks like. So the red here is sell to open. I want to open the trade, sell to open for 50 cents. So it's a limit order for 50 cents. So this has to fill first before these orders come into place. But once the first one fills, I'm saying close the trade for 10 cents if it's possible. If, if the put option that's worth 50 cents drops to 10 cents, close it for 10 cents automatically. But at the same time, if it, it starts going higher and it reaches $1.50, it surpasses $1.50, close the trade automatically. So as you see, this trade takes about 6,300 US of buying power. So it depends on how much buying power you have. But the trade that I made today was eight contracts. So eight times 50, that's $400 max profit, but it did end up being profitable and it closed before 11 a.m. for 10 cents. So it was a net profit of about $300 after commissions and everything filled automatically. I didn't have to watch the computer screen the whole day. Now, of course, this could have gone bad because it could have, Q's could have continued to drop, although unlikely because my strike was 373, while Q's had already dropped after hours and it dropped a little bit during market open to 382. So it was unlikely that it continues to drop and actually surpasses 373. So it was a pretty good strike and I was able to get that strike because volatility was high. So the problem with this trade is if volatility is not high, I'm not gonna be able to get that strike, that far away strike. My strike will, will probably be maybe, if, if, if Q's is at 382, my strike will probably, probably be 381, 380. So it's not as reassuring, it's gonna be much more stressful as a trade. And of course, a higher chance that it gets, uh, that the stop loss executes. If there's any slight downward movement or an increase in volatility during the day after the trade has been opened. All right, so there's a, something you have to understand. So there's a difference here. This buy to close order, the stop loss, is basically a market order. So when the put option surpasses $1.50, the value of the put option surpasses $1.50, the order will execute regardless what the market price is. So depending on how fast the queues are dropping and the value of this put goes up, sometimes it skips, it doesn't go up in pennies or in increments of pennies. In pe of pennies. It could go from 140 to 160, 165, 170. It, it, the market can move fast if there's something drastic happening. So that's the risk with this trade. But this is a market order, so it's gonna fill automatically right after $1.50. It might fill at $1.50, might fill at a dollar sixty, depending what the market order is available. You could set the stop loss for as a limit, but the risk of that, and I'll show you how to set it up as a limit. So to set it up as a limit, you go back to your bracket order. This is the profit section that you want. You want to close it for a profit here, and here you want to close it for a loss. So remember, I said stop loss is a dollar fifty. So that's when it triggers. But the limit price is what you want to actually buy it back for. But if I put a dollar fifty here it might not catch it, it might not fail. Sometimes your orders don't fail even if you are even if you have a limit order because the market moved too quickly and someone else's order filled. So that's the risk with this limit. Putting Setting a limit in the stop loss is it might not catch your limit order and then you're still holding on to the trade because you've got a limit order and the option could increase in value and you're stuck losing on the trade more than your anticipated loss, which was three times the credit received. So the reason I've got $1.50, because that's my plan is I collect 50 cents, but my max loss is 3x what I collected. So my max loss would be a dollar times the number of contracts. So that's why I don't put a limit order in the stop loss, just to make sure that it triggers. Or if I want to make sure it triggers, maybe I could put a dollar seventy, or maybe I could put my trigger a little bit lower at $1.30 and then put my limit at $1.50 uh, just to give it some time in case it's dropping fast uh, I, I can 
my limit order can get executed and filled. But then if you put the trigger lower, then you know you might be not might not be giving yourself the best chance to to win on the trade. But the important thing is to understand how it works. So this line here is when do you want the order to trigger? And the limit here is when at what price you want it to fill. If you don't care what price you want it to fill, you just want it to, to trigger right away and fill as soon as it surpasses a certain price, then just leave it as a, as a dollar fifty here, remove the limit order, and it's going to be a market order. If you look at the description here, it says the target price that triggers your loss exit, and then the market price that represents your loss target price. So we've, if we have a limit order of $1.70 here, all right, so Questrade crashed on me, so I'm continuing this recording the next day. So I'm just using a December 20th, and there's no 373, so I'll just use 372. Anyways, it's just for example purposes, just to show you how the bracket order works. So I enter a price here of 50 cents. I, I want it to sell for 50. Then I click on view more options here, and then I click on bracket order. And I've got the order for the to take profit, and I've got the order to take a loss. So. What I did is I did 10 cents to take a profit and the loss I did 1.5. Now, if you wanted to do a limit order so that after 1.5, your limit order gets in, goes in effect, then you can put a price over here. But like I mentioned, the risk is if it, if it moves fast, it, it might not get caught. So if you want to put a limit order, this is how you put it. And this is how it looks like. So now it looks like this, sell to open, 372.49 cents, buy to close, uh, at 10 cents, so that's for the profit, and then for the loss, it's buy to close, 372 put at 1.5 stop, but there's a 1.7 limit, while the other one just had a 1.5 stop. Now, this worked beautifully because it was volatility on Friday, but it's not gonna work all the time. I was able to go about like maybe 10 strikes or nine strikes lower than the current market price, but if volatility is low, I'm gonna be probably two points away. Now, why did I do naked and not a spread? I mean, I had a video uh, probably over a year ago where I was doing, uh, when VIX was like at 40, 50, I was doing zero DTE, but with SPY spreads. Uh, obviously, a spread would be more capital efficient. Uh, with this naked trade, I had to use almost 6,000 of capital per contract. But the reason I did, uh, and naked is so that I could apply the stop loss, so I could ap apply the bracket order. If I did spread, I would not be able to apply the bracket order. I would have to watch it myself and close the spread because you can't enter an order for a bracket order for a spread. So if I if I try to do a spread here, and I'll show you. So I'm doing a vertical here, vertical, and I just click anywhere. It doesn't matter. So I've got a spread here. I don't have the option to do a um, bracket. I've got limit price, duration, route, but I don't have the option to do a bracket order. But if I have a naked put instead, but as you can see now with a naked put, I've got the bracket order option. So another thing to consider with this trade is at 2 p.m., brokers will liquidate your positions if they're close to being uh, in the money after expiry, and you don't have the buying power for 100 shares times the number of contracts you did for the short strike or even for the long strike. So if that's the case, you have to make sure to close your position by 2 p.m. Now, if I look back at my trade, which I can't show you right now because it expired, I don't have the December 17 expiry available, but I ended up closing the trade for 10 cents before 11 a.m. So less than less than an hour and a half, the trade was open. But if I had held it before until 2 p.m., I would have been able to close it for 3 cents. So I basically missed out on 7 cents times 8 contracts. But not a big deal, I mean, taking profit in less than two hours of of, a, of a market open is pretty good. All right, so this was my zero DTE strategy using a naked put on triple Qs with a bracket order with question so that everything sets automatically. The profit is automatic and the stop loss is automatic. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Like always, if you can open an account with Questrade to trade on the stock market, use my referral link below to get $50 in free commissions. Thanks for watching.